What's going on everybody? This is Living in Arizona Now and today we are going to talk about how safe is Arizona. So with all the things going on uh, currently in 2022, people are asking, hey, is it still safe to live in Arizona? Is Arizona safe? I read something on the internet that said uh, Phoenix was dangerous or I read something on the internet that said this and that. And so we're going to talk about the things you need to know about safety and dangerous things to know about Arizona. So let's go ahead and dial this in and take a look. So if you guys are just now tuning in, uh, definitely hit the like button. Let us know you guys can hear us loud and clear and we'll dive in here and take a look. This is just driving around Phoenix. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna talk about is the uh, most commonly asked question, Arizona dangerous. So the thing that comes up is crime rate. And if you look at the very top Google result, this is funny here, says Arizona's largest city comes in eighth on the list of most dangerous places to be at night during the year of 2020. It's actually not funny. It's funny because you wouldn't think Phoenix is dangerous, but you hear something like this and you're like, wow, these statistics really do stand out. Number eight, the most dangerous places to be at night. That stands out, right? And so if you go through here and you take a look at some of the other statements that were made, for example, on this website here called Travelers Abroad, so how safe is Phoenix really? And they say, Phoenix can't be considered a safe city. It has its safe areas and dangerous areas, but the dangerous ones outweigh the safe ones. By the way, guys, if you live in Arizona or Phoenix, please do uh, let us know what you think in the comments. Is it safe or is it dangerous? Because uh, we did actually put this to poll. I'm going to bring that up here in a moment, but I want to know what you guys think also as we're going through this, as you're hearing what's being said. Arizona is number one nationwide in identity theft and adult kidnappings. Uh, this has been going on since, I guess, the two, early 2000s, the adult kidnappings, although I personally don't know anyone who's had that happen, uh, thankfully. Uh, both fraud and violent crime are big problems in the entire state, and this applies to Phoenix too. So you can see this is what the media says about Phoenix. Now we're going to turn it over to the people and I'm really hoping you guys are going to comment on this so that it can add into what needs to be said. But we did put it to poll. And a lot of people who live in Arizona watch this channel, by the way. Thanks to the nine people who hit the likes. Everybody who's hitting the likes, thanks a lot. But we're going to, we put it to poll. You could see, I said, do you feel, do you honestly feel safe living in Arizona? 83%. That's eight out of 10 people polled living in Arizona, over a thousand votes, okay, said, yes, they feel safe living in Arizona. That is more important than any data stat that you're gonna read because overall, it, you're getting to the people who are actually living it and experiencing it. Because statistics, people who get so caught up in data, it's kind of like the same idea of calling into a call center and them saying our automated system is here to help you. Please, do you want to talk to the? Do you want to talk to a real person or robot? You always want to talk to a real person because you don't want to talk to an artificial intelligence, a robot who's got some fake voice because you're not going to really be able to get the real situation out of it. You talk to people who live here. Over eight out of ten people, eighty-three percent of the people polled said it's safe. And I'm saying this because my sister, she recently went to Disney on Ice down in downtown Phoenix at the footprint center uh, Disney on ice has been going on like pretty much every year in January it happens right so as she's down there she's going through downtown obviously here we are driving Central uh, Avenue this is an older footage but she says uh, she goes on to Facebook and she says you know I've been all around the country uh, and I would have to say that still Phoenix is one of the safest places she went with just her boys two boys and her at night driving downtown Phoenix she felt safe and she no one talked her into saying that she just said it on her own so um to hear that coming from a woman who was driving in downtown phoenix her husband was at home she just went with her two boys to disney on ice she said she's really impressed how safe downtown phoenix is so i found that to be uh some encouraging words to people who are curious if phoenix is safe or not even some areas that we've talked about on this channel where we said we're not safe, uh, people ended up watching this channel and they moved there and they said, you know, considering uh, everything, all, all places they've lived before, uh, it was actually considered really safe to them. 
uh, some areas in North Phoenix. This is an area where uh, you could say has some higher crime in Phoenix, but people living there, they say they generally overall feel safe. So again, this is just encouraging words for people. Um, now, the other big metropolis that we have here is Tucson. Now, Tucson comes up on the list a couple times uh, with, with um, well, mostly South Tucson, this area just south right around here. And they say it's kind of dangerous. It's actually supposedly the highest percentage of uh, violent crimes in all of the state. But overall, Tucson also is considered safe. I don't know how many of you guys are f tuning in from Phoenix or Tucson, but you can say that. Um, Scott Glick says not safe on the avenues. That's been, that's overall been the statement about Phoenix. But uh, again, people living on the avenues, they'd be like, it's kind of it's safe. They consider it safe. Now, I will say that petty crime does happen over there. That's probably the biggest nuisance. Uh, so do be on the lookout for petty crime like car break ins. I mean, you know, going out to your car, maybe noticing your glove box is open. That kind of stuff can really frustrate you, but it does happen. And uh, that's kind of something that you want to pay attention to uh, on the west side of Phoenix in particular. Uh, Lowe says, Phoenix isn't terrible, yet some pockets aren't the greatest. But overall, it's not so bad. Please give me a weird face when I say I live in Levine. It's not as bad as most people make it out to be. Oh, people may give her a weird face when she says she lives in Levine. Yeah, I mean, Levine, it's west side. It's, it's the avenue side. Um, Geo says Arizona has trigger happy problem 19th Avenue. It's been it's been it's since New Year. Not really crime, but shooting overall stupid stuff. Yeah. Uh, so again, talking about the west side of Phoenix having problems, just like South Tucson would have some problems. But uh, for the most part, from Central West Central Avenue West in Phoenix is good. Now, when it comes to the smaller towns, because there are some other things to know about those small towns, uh, which ones come up on the list as being Oh, <laughs> as being uh, not so safe. And obviously um, some towns like Page, towns that you wouldn't expect, they have higher than normal crime statistics. But to see Page on that list, you're like, what's going on in Page? Um, but overall, I would say, yes, Arizona is safe. And if you even look at some of the uh, most dangerous towns across the country on some of these websites, for example, uh, this one right here, Neighborhood Scout, Most Dangerous Cities in 2020, if you go through here, not a single city in Arizona pops up. You know, you got Cleveland, Ohio, Wilmington, Delaware, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Camden, New Jersey, Kansas City, Missouri. So compared to the rest, or even Albuquerque, New Mexico, which is like a sister city of Tucson, you know, as you go through this list, you see Anchorage, Alaska, you know, places that you might not expect to be on there, but no Arizona town so far, right? See, so yes, we do have our problems here, but compared to the rest of the country, it's actually a safer place. No matter what the data is going to paint the picture of, I mean, we're safer than Salt Lake City, Utah, according to this. I don't see anything for Phoenix on here yet. Did you guys see an Arizona uh, or any town? No, I didn't. So uh, keep that in mind, you know, as you're, as you're um, really thinking about how safe it is. But let's talk about some other things that are considered dangerous or maybe not so safe in Arizona. And the first thing that we'll talk about is going to be what is considered venomous and poisonous animals in Arizona. A quick reference. So people who come here, they always want to know about these animals. They hear stuff online, they type on Facebook, they hear about scorpions, they hear about snakes, they hear about spiders, and they think, oh my goodness, because Arizona just has this reputation. Well, this is according to the University of Arizona here, you can see they've listed out all of the dangerous species. I see some people saying uh, some comments, which I will be reading. Scott Glick says, Phoenix overall and its suburbs are remarkably safe. Some of the best quality of life in the country. There you go. Yeah, I mean, Boise, Idaho is another place that has decent um, quality of life too. So we're going to take a look at some of these animals at, around Arizona that are considered the scariest or most dangerous. So... <laughs> 12 of the most nightmarish creatures you might encounter in Arizona. Now, this is a website called Ranker, and I show you this because this is the kind of stuff you would get ranking top of the line on Google telling you about the how dangerous Arizona is and how dangerous the animals are. Okay, so you can see this image, right, or this right here is a Gila monster, a big old Gila monster, right? Uh, it looks like a scary creature, but you know how many times I've seen that in nature, hiking, walking around? Like, 
Not once. Okay, I've seen it in a zoo. That's it. The bees, we do get Africanized killer bees. That can be a little bit of a slick situation. Uh, these to toads, <laughs> so these are the dangerous animals we have out here, they're saying. Toads, people lick toads. Uh, I don't know anyone who would want to lick a toad, but if you do, it's not a good idea. But um, it does secrete a strong toxin. Some people do this stuff for like DMT purposes. Uh, these beetles, I wouldn't even think twice about them being a problem. These will bite you and give you a bug bite. Uh, centipedes, I would say, yeah, you can occasionally get some centipedes around. The, that will get you. Uh, these black widows, they are lurking, especially if you leave things in your backyard unattended for a while. They will pop up. The black widows will. And those are, those will, uh, they have venom? Yeah, venom. Tarantula hawks are creepy and, yeah. Tarantula hawk, that's a tarantula, okay? And that's a tarantula hawk. It's an insect. I have been, I think I've been bitten. I think I've been stung or bitten by a tarantula hawk one time, like a hornet kind of deal. And these are the most common, these bark scorpions. People get those black lights and they go around with black lights in their backyard to see if they have any scorpions. But here's a look at a tarantula. I've, I, I think a tarantula might bite you, but I don't think it's poisonous. And these suckers right here will get you, the uh, snakes. So those are the reptiles and the bugs. But if you wanted to take a look at uh, some of the other mammals that we have out here that people consider to be dangerous, a coyote. Coyotes are dangerous to your animals. I don't know if they're necessarily dangerous to you unless they have pups, but those are pretty much all over Arizona. Javelinas, um, they can be aggressive. They can be aggressive, and they can be aggressive towards your animals. Uh, these are like a desert pig. Thanks to the 29 people who popped off the likes there. Um, someone said, uh, car break-ins happen everywhere. So Jane said, mosquitoes were bad this past summer for all the monsoons. Yeah, whenever we get lots of monsoons, we get um, lots of mosquitoes and flies in the backyard, which are a pain in the butt. Deer, uh, I do know deer can bite, believe it or not. So, uh, you know, just be careful with deer. Don't think they're all fun and games, but especially in Southern Arizona, you'll see a lot of these, uh, these mule deer. Uh, you'll also see them in Northern Arizona. Now there are black bears. Uh, I have heard of an incident where a black bear had to be put down recently on Mount Lemon in the Catalina Mountains uh, for actually being too friendly with humans uh, because they were concerned that it might attack. Cota Monday, I don't know about a Cota Monday being too aggressive. I mean, it's like a raccoon. You know, any of these animals that might have rabies, it, it's a problem, right? Uh, you got this, and then you actually have a raccoon. I don't see too many raccoons down here in Phoenix. Sometimes you'll bump into one in like a uh, opossum or something like that. Skunks, we do get skunks down in Southern Arizona and even Northern Arizona. Ah, Chuckawalla, kind of like a Gila monster. What do you guys think is the most dangerous animal in Arizona? I mean, that's, that's an interesting question, but I would say of all the things that I really worry about when I'm out hiking, it's probably a mountain lion or a, um, or a rattlesnake. Those are the only two things that really catch my attention as I continue to go through this list. But these red-toed spot or red-spotted toads, you got to be careful with toads out here. Toads and frogs, uh, they they might look innocent enough, but you know, <laughs> it's like um, th this Gila monster here. You know, you look at a Gila monster, you're like, hey, that looks like kind of a cool creature. It actually is a cool creature. I mean, it's a really cool reptile. But uh, the thing with the Gila monster is it'll bite onto you and it won't let go. And usually the only way to get it to let go is you got to dip your hand in a um, like a pu in a pool or something with water to get the to get it to let go because otherwise it won't and inside those fangs they do have some sort of like poison in there but again this western diamondback rattlesnake is the one that always comes up on the list and if we're really being straightforward yeah that rest that rattlesnake is what typically uh, scares me the most and so if we were to go right here to i just want to show you guys this western rattlesnake because uh let's see here there was a there was a rally today in Florence. Did anyone go to that? I didn't. Uh, my friend was saying he was going to go. Let's see. Western rattlesnake. Um, yeah. Okay. So this rattlesnake here is the. Uh, as you know, our baseball team is called the Western Diamond or the Diamondbacks after the Western Diamondback. Uh, you, they call it a diamondback because it appears to have diamonds on its back, but you can see the rattler. This is a young one because it doesn't have many beads on it. So you'll know how old a rattler is based on its beads on its tail. Um, but yeah, these are some feisty vipers, I'll tell you. <laughs> they call them venomous pit viper species found in Western North America, 
uh, Baja California Peninsula and Southern Interior, even all the way up to British Columbia. Yeah, I was out in the desert uh, yesterday hiking around again, exploring a new area. And as I was exploring up there, I came across some um, uh, snake shedding skin. And what I want to do, actually, I got a wildlife camera, one of those uh, motion detectors. I just ordered it on Amazon for like $90. I'm going to go out into the desert. I'm going to try and hide it so no one tries to grab it or anything, probably for like a day or two, and see what comes up on there for uh, motion detection. This is kind of close to the city, and I know there's wildlife out there because I was bumping into jackrabbits. I was bumping into hawks, uh, like a falcon hawk uh, that kind of hangs out on this one tree. I like hawks. Uh, then there was also, um, you know, some coyote droppings. There was also what appeared to be some deer droppings. And lots of little bunny rabbits, but plenty of quail. For those of you who don't know what a quail is, it's like a pheasant. Anyway, uh, I saw lots of that down there, and I, I found that to be interesting. So I was like, well, let's see what else is out here. Maybe there's some big cats. Uh, for those of you who do not know this, there was recently a jaguar. This was kind of recent, found in Arizona. Let's see here. Someone said they saw it in, uh, what, Phoenix or what? Okay, so jaguars are not commonly seen in Arizona, but there has been one. This is on PBS here. Although jaguars are widely assumed to live exclusively in Mexico, Central, and South America, they once prowled Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas before colonizers and poachers in the 19th century drove most of these beautiful spotted big cats out of the U.S. So in other words, they probably killed them. I don't know why they don't just say that, but you, what are you going to do? Tell it. Tell a jaguar, hey, move out of your home. No, he's going to keep coming back. Um, but anyway, the jaguar was spotted in southern Arizona, uh, I believe near Sierra Vista. So the area where this jaguar keeps kind of coming up over the last few years, he's coming up from over here in Mexico into this area down by uh, Sierra Vista. It's right around here. He's coming in there. And some people have said, I think they've even had some jaguar spottings further north than that. But uh, yeah, jaguars are, uh, it's interesting that jaguars used to be all over this land and now they're not here. As uh, someone said, or Jeff S said, quails are strange birds, little chickens. Yeah, they're like little desert pheasants and they make a like a unique noise. Uh, <laughs> I would try to do it, but it probably wouldn't sound like, murr, murr. I don't know. it's like, murr, murr, murr. Like, but it's way, way cooler than that. <laughs> um, Salvador says, tried shooting a quail with a 22 when I was young, missed. Oh, <laughs> all right. Well, I mean, the things people will, <laughs> you know, I, no, I mean, you know, people get BB guns when they're kids and they'll do things. Um, but a quail are, quail are hard to get anyway, because they're fast. They, they move on their feet. They, and what they do is they, they run and then they, they, they fly and then they stop and then you got to, you know. They don't fly like way far away like a hawk. If a hawk sees you, he'll fly way over, way out there. Um, Jose said, three bedroom apartment was 650 when I first moved here. What is it now? Um, he also said, constant mortar fireworks is getting old. They won't do anything about it. Keep starting fires in my neighborhood. Yeah, that'll lead us to our next conversation, which is crazy that they even legalize fireworks in Arizona because it really shouldn't be legal here. By the way, I wanted to show you guys the, uh, this is our seven day forecast. Okay. For Phoenix. Sunday, 73 degrees with a low of 46, 1% chance of rain. So 72 on Monday, 69 on Tuesday, 72, 74, 72, 74, 70. So we're in the seventies all January with like a little bit of potential rain on January 28th. That's the weather out here in Phoenix. And this is why so many people are moving here because uh, they just can't get them up. They, they're like, this is amazing weather. And then they're, they're snowbirds. And what they do is they just move back to Wisconsin for the other five months out of the year when it's hot. <laughs> and then they come over here and they enjoy our weather. And, uh, you know, that's what they do. So some really nice weather. Just wanted to point that out since I know some of you guys are interested in that. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to talk about is the most, the worst not natural disasters that we get out here. So what are some natural disasters that make safe or da dangerous? As you guys know, I don't know if you guys saw the footage of that situation that happened in Tonga. Thanks to the 45 people who hit the likes. Let's try and get that up as we continue to push this on here. 
but there was a there was a big tsunami in uh, Tonga, which is an island chain in the Pacific Island region. And I guess what ended up happening was, uh, yeah, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what actually ended up happening, but it was a underwater volcano, and it had an explosion and it created a sonic boom. And then there was a tsunami that actually went out, hit Tonga, the island, like came up on the shore. And people had cell phone video of all this. And then it, it like sent a tsunami all the way to Hawaii and, and uh, California. Okay. So, you know, people are all like, oh my gosh, it's the sign of the end times. It's like, well, the first thing I would say is you want to know something interesting. Uh, all it takes is going onto a map here and looking at all of the volcanic activity in the Pacific, the Pacific Archipelago here or the Northern Marianas all the way to the French Polynesia. All of those little acne looking pimples on the earth's surface are all volcanoes so it's like this is nothing new that's been going on in that area in fact we've been kind of lucky that we don't get more of these intense volcano eruptions that pop up because all of those little islands in micronesia and the marianas islands were coming from uh these volcanoes like hawaii for example when you go out there you can see all the way from the aleutian islands across these were Volcanoes. In fact, there's the newest volcano in Hawaii that is erupting under the ocean is right here off the big island. And Kilauea is the most active. Kauai being an old extinct uh, volcano is actually shrinking. So um, as as nature grows, it also shrinks, you know, it erodes, right? So uh, it, it is crazy. But people, they, they see this stuff happening and they think it's a sign of the end times. And it's like, look all across the ocean floor. These volcanoes have been happening all the time. In fact, they probably happened with more frequency long ago. But now there's 7 billion people living on planet Earth. So more people are in the path of natural disasters. But back to Arizona's natural disasters. So the first one that you have is not necessarily a natural disaster, but you could call it heat or uh, drought. So Arizona is known for its dry heat. The low humidity makes the heat more tolerable, but the temperatures can still reach dangerously high levels. Yeah, when it's 118 degrees, that is wicked hot, guys. That is hot, hot, hot. Um, wildfires. Wildfires are a big thing that happen every summer, especially uh, if we're dried out. You know, it's always nice to have like rainstorms in April or May in Arizona, but they're few and far between. But when they happen, that usually lightens the wildfire season. But if you have a lot of rain, say all the way up until February and March, and then you don't see any rain until uh, the monsoon season starts in late July, or well, it technically starts in mid-June, but we don't see rain typically until like uh, mid-July. Although this year on the 4th of July, we were getting some monsoon activity. So that was early. That's how it used to be, right? Uh, but wildfires, that's how they pop up. So if we have a dry like spring, not good for wildfires, but we'll see. Next thing we get is these dust storms, but it's usually like dust storms mixed in with smoke from California wildfires. We've been getting a lot of that and it creates this haze in the sky and it's not very good to breathe that air in, right? Next thing we get, natural disasters. I don't know if you'd call it a natural disaster, but it can be for your yard if you don't have things tied down and a big gust of wind and Scott said it, he said a microburst. Uh, a microburst will just kick up in your backyard. You know you're in an area where you have microbursts because you'll see like little dust devils. Those little mini tornadoes, they're dust devils and they fly uh, on the fields, right? That's an area that typically you'll know is going to get some microbursts. And they just come into your yard and they'll rip something up. It's a big gust of wind. Uh, in my backyard, it took away my umbrella. <laughs> I had my umbrella in one of those sticks, but it was still open. And the storm came out of nowhere because sometimes these monsoons will cook up out of nowhere. And they'll just come right over the mountains. And within an hour, you go from sunny and hot to all of a sudden like gray and intense storming which leads to our next thing flooding i've seen flooding happen in uh northern in uh winter and i've seen flooding in the summer i would say both are dangerous so um but monsoon flooding can be really crazy i've i'd say the craziest i've seen is monsoon flooding um remember the gnarly one in santan valley few years ago says Scott I think I do I don't know I mean I, I know that we've had some gnarly storms we did a we did a video on the channel uh about a, a specific gnarly storm we did so this blizzard that hit last year I would call it a blizzard I mean I could pull up the video here let me see if I can get it but um I need it without sound let's see if I can get it oh 
at this ad here, but I'll show you the footage of what we had going on last summer. Uh, you could see pretty thick snow in northern Scottsdale right here, right? I mean, this is heavy. I called it a blizzard. Someone from uh, Minneapolis says, if you call that a blizzard, you haven't seen nothing yet. Well, either way, um, it was coming down pretty, pretty heavy, I would say. You could see the higher up you go up into Phoenix, I mean, look how heavy it is. Look at that. That's Phoenix. That's Scottsdale, guys. <laughs> so um, we'll see. I mean, I, I can't guarantee it. But you guys can see some of the crazy uh, storms that we get pretty much every year on this channel. If you just go probably right here to off-road Arizona, I think we've put most of them there. But the blizzard and then the monsoon storm that was crazy. Uh, where was where's that video? Oh, you got to scroll down to popular uploads. 100-year monsoon storm. I don't know if it's a 100 year monsoon storm, but to me it felt like it. I think every storm that, that hits during when it's happening, you're like, that one was a doozy. And then you look back on it two years later and you're like, well, I don't know if that was the one, but it was one of the ones that was really crazy. You know, um, David Hauser says, look at FBI crime statistics for city of interest. Yeah, uh, when I did look at the FBI crime uh, data, they said that Phoenix actually was experiencing an uptick in 2020. I don't think the numbers have concluded for 2021, but it looked like Phoenix was getting it. But I mean, we could talk about the safest places. I mean, if you really want safety uh, and safety is the most important thing that you're going to need, you got to get out of that uh, tsunami zone right there. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to be on the coast in California when a tsunami comes in because of a volcano rupture in P French Polynesia, do you? Anyway, um, here you got this. Uh... OK, so here's the safe areas. Basically, this whole side of East Phoenix is relatively safe. Most, most Southeast Phoenix, aside from a pocket in Mesa and Tempe, relatively safe. The, it's just like the, but the hot zones, the hot zones would be like an orange zone. They're not like a, a full on red zone. We don't really have any like red zones where it's like thou shall not go, right? So, you, you know, if you're really worried about that, don't be, don't be worried. Um, Great Fire Share says, watch out, folks. He's doing another live st stream, so I guess somebody famous will pass away again. Oh, yeah, the last two live streams we did, crazy enough, um, Betty White, it was when Betty White passed away, and then the other one was when Bob Saget passed away. But I've been doing live streams about one, three or four a week, so, you know, celebrities, I guess they die. Uh, actually, there's been a lot of people getting sick this this winter. It's not just one reason, though, like multiple different people have been dealing with health issues it's like what's going on in the stars up there you know they say oh it's mercury retrograde today i guess i don't know no but this was this was over the christmas holiday a lot of people had health issues and i don't seem to remember it being that bad um but paulie says we're where are the big cracks on the desert earth openings oh earth openings <laughs> wow Good question, but we don't really have like what they have in the San Fernando Valley. So you guys know of the uh, San Andreas fault line, right? San Andreas fault line is basically uh, from the Bay Area through like right here. And uh, what he's basically asking about is this kind of stuff right here. Uh, it's like these ruptures. I think this is the fault line. I can't I can't tell which one's the fault line, but they have some areas in California like that. But Saying we don't have any real fault lines out here, but we have earth openings that, you know, are interesting, uh, worth noting. And typically they're mines, uh, but they're man-made. You know, you have the one in Morenci, uh, this big mine right here, huge mine. I mean, if you guys go to that mine, you'll see some big, some big, big uh, machinery out there pulling out lots of pay dirt, lots of pay dirt. That's a copper mine, right? They've got a couple other copper mines that are like, you know, no longer in use in Bisbee. Uh, but these are not, you know, these are not the ruptures. If anyone knows about a rupture that I can point out, I can go there. But I'll look around at this map quite often. I mean, as you guys can tell, I spend a lot of time looking at Google Maps uh, or Google Earth, whatever you want to call this. But, you know, you look at something like this. This is clearly a river. This is clearly a river. Um, but you have crevices like an earth opening in a canyon, like the Grand Canyon. And if you look at this from a map, you can definitely see uh, this was quite the uh, carving they have here. I mean, this, they carved out a lot of uh, earth with the Colorado River, huh? And 
I don't really know of any ruptures from earthquakes. Arizona is not known to get earthquakes. We're not really known to get tornadoes, although we have seen some tornadoes develop around like Santan Valley. It's always like a threat, but it never really comes to fruition. I think they had like a funnel cloud maybe up in Pre Prescott Valley at some point. Uh, obviously, in order for a funnel cloud or a tornado to, to take place, there has to be flat land. Phoenix being a valley, it does have potential, but it's surrounded by mountains, so it kind of protects it from a funnel cloud. Salvador says baby boomers are starting to check out. Yeah, I remember last year in 2020, I remember in 2020, I remember seeing a lot of hearse. I was living over in uh, Desert Ridge area, and I remember there was just like, it seemed like there was a funeral procession every single day, procession. Uh, and I don't, I don't know what the deal is with that, but... I haven't been seeing it as much, but I was like, I guess it's COVID or what, you know? Um, Barbara Summer says AZ does get haboobs. Yeah, haboobs are a very interesting name, but more importantly, they're a very interesting weather phenomena that brings a lot of dust and that causes a health issue called valley fever. For those of you who don't know what valley fever is, we can kind of touch on that, but uh, there are people who, who, who have had I guess you could call it chronic, chronic valley fever or acute valley fever. It's a problem when it goes, when it becomes chronic, right? When it's the damages that are done don't go away. So, so you can see valley fever also known as California fever, desert rheumatism or San Joaquin Valley fever is a mammalian fungal disease caused by cocodias amidus. I, I mean, why do they call it that? I don't know. I mean, how about an alternative name maybe? But it basically comes from mycelium in the soil and these spores pop up. So I'd imagine it comes from like cattle um, or some sort of mammal, you know, because we used to have another one out here called, uh, called, um, phew, man, what was that? What was that virus that was in Northern Arizona? Oh man, I can't even remember. I wish I, it's, it's, it's evading my mind right now. I should, I should be able to remember it. But anyway, signs and symptoms, the fungi responsible for it uh, have little to no symptoms. So sometimes people don't even know they get it. They say their dog gets it, but feeling tired. I'm not trying to scare anyone with this because I, I, I don't know uh, enough about it, but headaches, rash, muscle pain, joint pain, maybe even a lot of people have already had it. Uh, but this is, this is a concern that people get. And then in order to get diagnosed for it, you actually have to go get uh, x-rays, chest x-rays. So, I mean, I, 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 the reason I don't really want to do signs and symptoms is because someone's going to hear that. They're going to say they have the symptoms and the signs, and then they're going to start getting, you know, hypochondria and start thinking that they're infected with valley fever. Um, so that's why I don't really want to talk about it. But, you know, if you do get it, it is a thing. So just keep it just keep it on the back of your mind that there's something like this that exists out here for those of you who are coming from elsewhere uh yeah the uh the other virus that i was talking about was called the haunta virus and i remember when i was a kid this was uh this was talked about quite a bit i remember it, they said it came from rats and uh it, it was originally sh discovered in northern arizona up here although they don't say anything about it here but i guess the haunta virus uh comes from rats and you know, it was happening in Northern Arizona. People were getting, and so they were kind of worried about it. It was like a, it was like a thing. I, I don't know if we've ever gotten dengue fever because you guys were asking about the, the, uh, what is it called? Um, here, I got to get this lined up. So you guys were talking about the, um, doctors. Wait, we had a friend die from hantavirus. Yeah, see, so that's the one. Um, Bill says, hey, you guys need my vote. <laughs> yeah, were any of you guys at the, uh, the rally that was in Florence? I don't know if it's called Huntavirus or... Ha it's called Hauntavirus. Um, Valley Fever sounds like a title from the band. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, again, I don't really want to harp on it too much, but uh, that one and the Hauntavirus, those are only two like main illnesses out here. Uh, as far as rabies go, we have seen some bobcats that... Uh, have like rabies or something and if you get if you get bit by a bobcat that's rabid you know typically the crazy thing is the only time a bobcat will ever try to attack you or your dog is pretty much if he's rabid because the same uh bobcat that's not starving to death you know he won't attack you 
No, it's not, it's no. I'm not doing the whole fear mongering thing. I'm not. I'm. I'm saying this actually. I'm telling you, this thing actually exists, and you don't have to worry about it. But there are people out there who who got it. Uh, so it's it's. But it's not one of those things that you need to be like. It's just something that exists. Okay. <laughs> I feel bad that I even brought it up because I know some people are like so caught up in the health worry worry zone that they just can't evade it and the, the next thing they get it they're like great another one um someone said if you really love america then you know united we stand divided we fall yeah i think everyone knows that we have to come together as a people <laughs> i i don't think we have a choice but you know there's so many people who are just addicted to uh, arguing and addicted to uh you know all these all these things that are just not healthy for the human condition. Thanks to 80 people who hit the like button. See, we're almost over 100 likes. Um, but yeah, so we, we pretty much talked about everything that you needed to know about the venomous and poisonous snakes, the wildlife. Uh, just like I said, the rattlesnake is the one that worries me the most when I'm out there. When I'm hiking deep in the woods or in the, in the desert, high desert, I do, I do pay attention to the cliffs, looking up at uh, mountain lions and think, well, what if I was to encounter a mountain lion? What would I do? Would I turn around and run? Well, no, that's probably not the best thing you're going to want to do. Uh, so, you know, there's these, these ideas that you have, but if you see a snake, what do you do? Well, walk away. Snakes aren't trying to eat you. They're not hungry for you. Um, it's, it's just one of those things. Hey, welcome to all the new subscribers, by the way. Let's see here. So we got I lived in northern Arizona during that time, and it comes off as ticks or mice that get on deer and elk. And if you're walking around in the forest, you need to know it exists. Yeah. Uh, we, we do have some, like, poisonous plants, like poison ivy or poison oak. I know that when I was a kid, I used to go up there, and they would say, hey, watch out for poison oak or poison ivy. And I'd be like, what is that? I don't understand. What, what is this? And I'm like, it, it's a poisonous plant. And then you'll be like, hey, well, what's it look like? Like, someone tell me what poison oak or poison ivy looks like. So we'll take a look. Poison oak. I can't, I'm not spelling that correctly, but let's see if I got it. Oh, man. Did I, get, did I tell you guys that spelling is not my number one area of uh, strength? What is the cost of a result of a snake bite? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, the, the, the worst thing that could happen, I suppose, would be you going into the hike way up in the woods and, uh, you know, you have a bite with a snake. You, you know, a snake bites you. How do you get out of there? Is your friend going to be able to carry you on his back or her back to get you to safety? Are you going to be able to walk out of there? If not walk out of there, how far away are you from the closest place that has cell phone reception what did the cowboys do back in the day when this was a thing anyway like you know you're everyone's always thinking about that uh what do you guys think of this sweatshirt by the way as we're kind of ranting and raving what do you guys think i've gotten a lot of compliments i think people want the arizona flag i was going to put either an arizona flag on the sleeve of another shirt or another sweater so arizona flag on the chest american flag on the arm what do you guys think of that why we're kind of talking about snakes <laughs> change the subject but we'll get back into the snakes yeah so the, the snake thing that's that's what worries me the most so i would say for for me what i do is i wear boots out there uh hiking boots because if it's going to bite i would imagine it's going to go I, I would hope that it goes to where the boot is but if it goes up higher to like my leg or like my shin or my calf that's not good so you know maybe a pair of cowboy boots but even then a, a snake's fangs can penetrate that uh you know that boot so you still will probably get some but hopefully it's not the big full injection from a snake's fangs and how often does that happen well not too often what's the bear casino in air oh the best casino in arizona yeah we've got that question that's a good one you guys let's turn it over to the audience for me i would say i really like a uh, talking stick I like Talking Stick, and I also like the one down in Chandler, down here, Gila River Resorts and Casinos Lone Butte. There's actually a second one, isn't there? I think it's Wild Horse Pass. Is that the one? Oh, yeah, Gila River, this one. Gila River Resorts Casino Wild Horse Pass is nice. They also have a hotel. You can do a staycation there. Uh, I was thinking about going over there and watching some of the games at one of these casinos, because now 
uh, sports gaming is legal, right? So, or something like that. I don't know the exact law. I have to go there and see exactly what the laws change. So please don't quote me on that. You guys be like, yeah, the guy I'm living in Arizona now told me I can make sports bets at the casino. <laughs> and, you know, and I'm like, oh, well, no, I didn't. <laughs> I don't know for a fact. So I better clarify that. But yeah, talking stick is over here. Let's see if we can get on it right here. Got a golf course and a casino. I've stayed at that hotel there. And then there's a nice one on the west side of uh, Phoenix in Glendale near Arizona Cardinals Stadium. Uh, it's called Desert Diamond Casino, West Valley. Desert Diamond's actually pretty cool. It's I guess this picture is kind of old, but I like Desert Diamond. Which one do you guys like? I mean, Simone says she likes Wild Horse Pass. Um, AJ says talking stick hands down. Uh, Paul says I like Diamond Casino on Northern and 101. Uh, so people like these casinos because what you can do at the casino is you can have buffet dinner. You don't even have to do gaming. They just like going there because you can do uh, the buffets. They got nice bars. It's always like this very glitzy Las Vegas kind of environment with chandeliers hanging from the sky. And, you know, if you wanted to put 20 bucks in a machine and try your luck, some people do that too. Uh, some people are like, why are you even talking about casinos? <laughs> Well, it's a thing. It is a thing. Uh, what is your opinion on Top Golf? Top Golf is cool, man. Top Golf is a great way to, if you got like 10 people and you're all looking for something to do that's an activity, I mean, you got, we're talking about like at night, right? You guys want to go have some uh, fun in the city that also allows you to do, uh, you know, physical activity. You're going to have something like axe throwing at one of those places. You've got bowling, and then you've got top golf. You know, just some physical activities. There's another game where you throw. I think it's called cornhole. You guys ever play cornhole? It's, it's kind of weird, but um, <laughs> it, it's one of those things that people play when they're down here. Um, so those are some physical activities, and then they go dancing, right? Line dancing. If you, you take, if you, if you're a single guy, go line dancing because the the amount of women, the, the guy to girl ratio at line dancing is out of control. Uh, it, not out of control, but out of out of kilter. Okay, there's way more girls out there line dancing than there are men. And if you're one of the brave ones who get out there and do the boot scoot and boogie or whatever it's called, uh, you 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 might you might just wow a girl <laughs> and end up married or something. I don't know. Um. Oh, uh, someone said they're gonna be tuning into that. Okay. Well, see you later, Tim Burt. I understand. And. Uh, he, he said he's going to watch the Trump rally. It's on. He's like, bad timing with the live stream. He's going to go watch the Trump rally. Um, so I understand if someone's got to do something like that. But um, Sean says, lived in Glendale as a kid. I heard it is the best anymore. I just figured that the Cardinals play there can't be too bad. Would Phoenix be better? Oh, man. Glendale is not that bad. Um what, like if you were, if you already grew up in Glendale and you know Glendale, it hasn't gotten worse. It's probably gotten better. <laughs> I mean, you know they they built the Grand Canyon University out there. Like for those of you who are looking for an alternative school uh, for your kids or for yourself, Grand Canyon State University is actually popular. It's also known as GCU. In fact, they like to go to a lot of basketball games. Watching a basketball game at GCU is considered a good a good situation. There's the arena, GCU Arena. Let's see if they got some like pictures of what it looks like in there this is like a place you could take your kids uh, you see the lighting and everything it's kind of small but i think these guys even made it to the um they do a lot of church functions in that that place but gcu arena i think they made it the grand canyon state what's their motto what's their mascot they made it to like the sweet 16 or something at some point maybe the great 64 or something like that um, Angels Donald says golf. You'd be surprised how many people like golf. This is why people like golf, especially uh, people who like physical activity. You take this little white ball and you take a golf club and you swing really darn hard and you try to hit it like 300 yards, 400 yards. And then it takes a little bit of finesse when you get around the green, you got to be finessing it. So it's like this, it's like this game that allows you to like 
really hit a ball hard and far and then kind of strategize in between. So that's why it's really popular. <laughs> People don't understand what the, po the point of golf is. They think it's boring, but there is a good reason why so many people who pick it up. If you look at all the athletes, they always pick up golf. Uh, Marshall says, Jeff, do they have Frisbee golf in Phoenix? I've actually never done Frisbee golf in Phoenix. I knew they had it in Hawaii. I've seen it on some islands, but let's type it in here on uh, Google Maps to see if they do Frisbee golf. All right, let's see here. Oh, another thing that people do is they go to these gun ranges and they shoot their guns. But uh, yeah, it looks like they've got quite a few. They got disc golf at Papago. So Papago Golf Course, that's a nice golf course and a disc golf course to go probably because of the scenery, because Papago is a nice area. Um, I, I mentioned that the Trump rally was going on and apparently my numbers on my live stream went way down because everyone's going to go tune into that, I guess, or a lot of people are. I, don't, I, I, I could see why. I mean, it's a big event for Phoenix, but um, I think everyone, a bunch of people just left to go watch that. <laughs> uh, someone said drugs are really popular here. Well, I hope not. I mean, that's just terrible if, if people have to do drugs to feel uh, complete. Um, I don't know. AJ, they have disc golf everywhere in Tempe. It's very popular. Yeah. So uh, Danielle says, Jeff, are you worried about the alleged drought in Arizona? Folks are afraid it's completely drying up. Are you? Um, yeah, there's a Trump rally in Phoenix and Florence. It's happening right now. That's why people are, uh, saying they have to go watch it <laughs> the numbers are just falling off all of a sudden because everyone's going to watch it apparently or not everyone but a lot of them uh wait there but yeah so as far as the drought goes let's talk no um like i said it, on previous live streams i'm more worried about a drought if this lake theodore roosevelt starts going down and they're having a hard time filling up uh, apache lake uh, Saguaro Lake or Canyon Lake. This is Canyon, that's Saguaro. And then if I ever saw that like Lake Pe Pleasant was going down, that would be a big concern. But other than that, no, I'm not worried about it. Now, as far as like Las Vegas or LA goes, that's a big thing. Uh, when you're talking about drought, are you talking about like not a lot of rain or, or what? Because we had a, probably one of the wettest summers that we've had on record in possibly the last 10 years, I would say. Um, well, there goes the numbers back up again. Um, Jay said, or Jeff said, what? Someone said, oh my gosh, full size shuffleboard is cool. Yes, it is. Um, oh, there it is. Jeff S says, what's your favorite AZ tree? Palo Verde for me? Oh, yeah. So trees in Arizona. <laughs> it's cool because we could really talk about that in detail at some point. But, uh, you know, for me, my favorite tree is probably an ironwood. I like an ironwood tree. Um, let's see. Many woods. It's, it's like a hard wood. Uh, let's see if they have an ironwood tree on here, though. I mean, I wish there was a website that could just show me all the trees in Arizona. Let's see. It's got to be something. Uh, you know, it's just wild how the internet works no <laughs> it's like if, you, if, if that's how the internet works if you can't if you if it's not there you got to make it so i got to make a whole video about trees now in arizona because i can't find anything that wants to uh, resemble what a palo verde tree looks like or a ironwood tree or a mesquite tree um it, but let me think about that a little bit more there's some cool trees like there's a douglas fir in northern arizona there's like i think they we get pon ponderosa pines uh we also get some like uh, aspens near Mount Baldy. I've seen aspens. I've seen aspens up on uh, up in Flagstaff on hum Humphreys Peak. Aspens, those are cool, cool trees. The way they grow, uh, cool desert trees. <laughs> and a bougainvillea is obviously not from here, but those are really popular. Yeah, tr uh, Palo Verde trees are are really nice trees, especially when they're blooming in springtime. They get those yellow flowers. They're extremely messy, and they can make your allergies really act up. If you're getting allergies, I would I would say that you might just be allergic to Palo Verde trees, the yellow flower on the Palo Verde tree. 
Unc says, Palo Verde trees turn your yard yellow when all the pretty yellow flowers fall and they host hundreds of bees. Yeah, you get lots of bees, friendly bees, not those killer bees, okay? But they're friendly bees and they, um, you know, they show up and you just interact. You're like walking around your yard blow, using the blower, trying to blow out all those uh, flowers that fell to the ground and get rid of them. But uh, in the trees will be a bunch of, you know, insects and hummingbirds and doves and all these different animals in this right here in the desert. Terry says, I have a son and grandchildren who live in Prescott. Nice. David says, Arizona's Tater Hills, the Arizona Geological so Survey has located a giant fissure in the earth. It's two miles long. Okay, thanks for sharing that. Let's see, Tater Hills. So we have a fissure, is that, that's volcanic? That's volcanic. Huh? All right, so this looks like a little mini volcano. Okay, so this would be the area and it looks like it's, so it's in between Phoenix and Tucson. So there's a fissure. I don't see it. Those look like little mini volcanoes though. Linda says, I'm a native of Arizona for 62 years. If you're, if you could tell us one thing that all new people or anyone should know about Arizona, what would it be? What do you think? That's not necessarily mainstream. It's like, you know, back in the day, 40, 50 years ago, when someone was learning about Arizona, you'd say, well, we have the Grand Canyon. Well, now everyone knows about the Grand Canyon because it's one of the seven wonders of the world. Um, but if you could, if you could find one, what would it be? Yeah, David. So tell us more about the fisher then. Um, someone says Cary Lake. Yeah. So there's a, uh, governor, governorial, uh, candidate who is really popular in Arizona because she used to work with 12 news, I believe it was. So she was a news anchor and I guess she's going to run for governor and people who've been living in Arizona for a long time, they absolutely love Cary Lake. So she might just be our next governor, but she used to work for 12 news. So she's already kind of got her name out there. Everyone knows about Carrie Lake. When's Ducey up for re-election anyway? He's the governor, Doug Ducey, for those of you who do not know that. And someone tried to say his name was Doug, uh, pronounced Doug Ducey, but it's Doug Ducey. Jeff, Oral Valley, safe, good place for retirement. Oral Valley, yeah, it's safe. So Doug Ducey's the governor. Oh, Carrie Lake was with 10 News. That's Fox 10. See, so, I mean, there's there, the, the, the major news stations in Arizona are, if you got an antenna, because <laughs> Cox, apparently Cox, Cox Cable doesn't want to give me local stations. Like, I'm like, what's up, Cox Cable? I need local stations because I need to be able to watch the Cardinals and uh, or any of the Monday night football games, right? Or any anything, right? And uh, anyways, the, the main stations where the news are, we have News Channel 3. I don't know if... KPHO Channel 5 is now, is still there. We used to have public broadcasting on Channel 8, Fox 10, NBC 12, ABC 15. Those are the news channels. There's, so there's about five. Now you know. You can follow them all. But News Channel 3, when I was a kid, we used to watch News Channel 3. And then for evening news, it seemed like, yeah, we probably watched Fox 10. David's like the uh, the weather phenomena guru in here. Um, S S Simone says, for those of you who are interested in astronomy, don't forget to mention Kitt Peak and Lowell Observatory. Yeah, we talked about Kitt Peak and Lowell Observatory a couple times uh, on a few other videos, but Kitt Peak, astronomy, yeah, that's down here by uh, Tucson, right there. So you can go up there and really have some fun take the kids up there to the top of the observatory see lots of uh stars astronomy is a big thing i think university of arizona was known for astronomy for a while i don't know why it isn't anymore what the heck is cowtown key loco there's oh my gosh i've never been to this place i just found that on the map right now that's the cool thing about looking on the map i mean at least the picture would make it look cool i probably you probably want to go here for a party, but if you go there in the afternoon in the middle of summer, you might be like, oh, I'm kind of let down. But at night, it looks like a fun place. 
which is better, the Westgate Entertainment or Desert Ridge? Westgate is the best. The reason Westgate is the best is because, uh, you know, that's, that's where they play the game. So, like, when they have a Super Bowl or a major event, they do it at Westgate. So, Westgate's, I mean, there's a couple areas that are, like, big malls. I mean, we could make a whole video on malls, but, you know, it's, I don't know. I don't know. I think we've maybe we've already done it. I don't know. But Westgate, okay. This is where the Cardinal Stadium is and the Gila River Arena where the Coyotes play. They're playing the Avalanche tonight, but they have they have a nice area there and it's close to the casino. So everything right there on the west side. And then they have a top golf across the highway. Another mall that's uh, really popular in Phoenix. Uh, well, Metro Center is closed now, so you really got to go on the west side if you're going to the west side is Arrowhead Town Center. And you'll notice around the Arrowhead Town Center, they do have like spring training because spring training is coming up here. Uh, so you got the Mariners and I think the Cleveland Indians play out here. Uh, their spring training ball this March. So if you're into baseball, spring training, March is the time for that. Maybe February, March. Uh, but then you have Scottsdale Fashion Square. So this is where the old mall used to be. This one right here, Metro Center. That was the big that was the big ticket in town, but they've, they're tearing it down along with Paradise Valley Mall. So they're tearing down the old ones, and I guess they're going to build some new ones. Uh, but in Scottsdale, they have Scottsdale Fashion Square. Uh, I... I you know, I have to find all these places on a map, but it's like basically like right, uh, right here. This is Fashion Square. I think they could do a lot better with Fashion Square being that they have the canal, but this whole area is really booming at night. Like for young people, they go right over here to um, right here where the W is. So this whole area on Camelback and Scottsdale, if you go east, you have Whiskey Row, you have Bottled Blonde, you have Oasis Cafe, Julio's, the W, you know, the W in Scottsdale. This is like a place where people go just to throw like a pool party. Uh, but yeah, so this whole area, Scottsdale Fashion Square, might just be the area. So there's the mall and then there's the, the area where people go at night, especially the young people. The older people, when they go to Scottsdale, they go more up and down Scottsdale Road towards like Old Town. That's more of the relaxed Scottsdale, but it's all really in downtown Scottsdale. So downtown Scottsdale has got some pretty good activities. Probably, it depends on what you like. I mean, do you like sports or do you like outdoor partying and nightclubs? If you like sports and like the, the creation of like Super Bowl atmosphere, Westgate. If you like uh, nightclubs, downtown Scottsdale. Another area that's got some downtown activity, you have Tempe Marketplace, okay? This is the mall, and then right across the way there is going to be Mill Avenue, which is where Arizona State University is right here. And you've got some, like, clubs, and this is a place where, again, lots of young people go, Mill Avenue. Thanks to 136 people who hit the likes. If you guys are enjoying this video, please do hit that like button. Let's see if we can get it over to 150. Again, the algorithm wants me to tell you guys that until until Google finds another way to figure it out. <laughs> I actually went to a uh, we went to the Arizona State game. This is where the Sun Devils play, but they'll play like they used to play the Fiesta Bowl. They even played a Super Bowl at this stadium. This is Sun Devil Stadium. You can see there's there's Gammy or I can't remember Ganey Grammy. It's where the Sun Devils play basketball. You know, if you if you like watching games. You could go to the Sun Devils basketball game and you can go to a Sun Devils football game when it's the right time of year. Uh, so, yeah, that's down here in Tempe. So Tempe is a nice spot. Oh, it's actually called Desert Financial now. Jeez, they keep changing the name. Do Desert Ridge Marketplace next. Okay, we'll go up to Desert Ridge. Yeah, so Desert Ridge it's it's cool desert ridge is cool it's got some uh it's got some interesting things going on here because they've got the they've got a lot of restaurants they've got a nice desert ridge marketplace which is probably similar to the tempe and then they have this area called high street and high street i think they need more communities like high street across arizona if you haven't been to desert ridge high street uh probably the best way to get it to do it is go to one of the comedy clubs they got a comedy club right here so you get sushi, then you go over to the comedy club over here. And uh, let's see, where's the comedy club? There is a speakeasy in here. I don't think I'm authorized to share the information about where the speakeasy is. Uh, but yeah, there is a speakeasy. 
uh, in this area. But you, obviously, only so many people can go there. But here's like the ticket booth for the comedy. So this is called High Street. It's right next to Desert Ridge. And then they've got like, so this is one of those places in Arizona that has live, work, play, eat. Live, eat, work, play. And so High Street kind of has that because you can live in an apartment here. You can also work at one of the office buildings around High Street. And then you can eat and play by going to the many restaurants. They've got like uh, Modern Margarita. They've got uh, Mellow Mushroom. So many different places around here on High Street. And that's right next to the, the marketplace, the Desert Ridge Marketplace. So this area is popular in North Phoenix. And even nearby here, they have the JW Marriott Phoenix at Phoenix Desert Ridge. So it's kind of cool. Yes, we know the Trump rally is going on. Everyone keeps talking about the Trump rally. They're like, please, Jeff, say something about the Trump rally. <laughs> it's like, this is not a politics channel, though. <laughs> um, Jeremy says, I'm sure I can find a Kardashian wife in Scottsdale. <laughs> Oh, yeah, maybe. I don't know. I mean, Scottsdale is known for that. Ladybug says, am I married? I think I've gotten that question a hundred times, but I'll say no, not married. Um, Danielle Johnson, Jeff, is there a pass permit to explore the state and national parks? In Washington State, we have a Discover Pass that allows entry to most parks, or does each park have their own permit? Um... Yeah, there's okay. So obviously there's national parks. So you have national parks that, you know, they they require a USA pass. If you've got it, if you're a veteran, you can get it. If you're a senior citizen, you can get the annual pass or you can get the one day pass. But if you go to a state park, I think it varies depending on the state park and availability. I haven't really paid too much attention to how much you have to pay for state parks, honestly. I, I almost want to say they're they're free, but I'm sure I've paid. I've paid at some of the parks, and I ha I've not paid at some of the others. But as far as a National Parks Pass, let me see if I can find that. Um, I was on... So here's the AZ Parks website. So let's see here. Reservation. So you go to azparks.com, Arizona Parks and Trails, and you can see they've got all sorts of different uh, options. But yeah, buying an... An annual pass is one of those things that says uh, Arizona State Pass for pass holders and up to three additional adults in the same vehicle. So a car of four for, for this. And you can get uh, Lake Havasu, Cattail Cove, Buckskin Mountain. And so that's $75. There's also a premium one which provides non-commercial day use. I don't know. I, I guess they're still making a lot of money. You know, I thought that's what your tax dollars go to. Someone was saying, you know, in the United States, you, you know, you pay taxes on. I mean, this is a little bit of a vent here, but you pay taxes on your income. Then you pay taxes on your property. Then you pay taxes when you go to the store for a sales tax. Then you pay a luxury tax. Then you pay a state tax. And people are like, you know, there's like taxes on top of taxes on top of taxes. And it's like. And then, you, you know, if you want to go to like the national parks or the state parks, you also got to pay to get in there. And that's like a tax. So it's like, wow, when does it ever end? And, and, and people are like, hey, pay your taxes. Make sure make sure you're uh, doing the right thing and paying your taxes. You're like, which tax? Which which one? I mean, there's a lot. <laughs> so if you guys are talking politics in the comments, you'll notice I'm probably not going to respond to it. Although I understand why. I understand it's a big thing. Read the book called The Tax Racket from A to Z. Yeah, The Tax Racket. It is a racket. And, and that's why they want big government because like people who work in big government, they don't... See, working for the government is like the greatest job you could ever have. It's got job uh, s stability, um, consistency, all the national holidays off. You get Saturday and Sunday off. So, of course, people who work for the government want more government because they're like, they love their cushy job and their decent paying job. I used to work for the government when I was in the military. I mean, that's the DOD, the Department of Defense. Um, but, you know, even being in the military, you get all the holidays off as long as you're not on deployment. 
Uh, you get the weekends off as long as you're not on deployment. Now, when you're on deployment, you're working every single day. And, you know, I went on three of those. So it wasn't like it was all fun in the sun. But getting a, I used to say to myself, I'd rather work for the government, but not the military. <laughs> so it's like get a job working for the government that's not the military. And then you don't have to worry about deploying. And then it's all good. Because the, the job safety was incredible. Richard says, in order to work for the government, you have to take an IQ test and fail it. <laughs> yeah, it's like working for the DMV. You just, if you're going to get a job at the DMV, you have to be a very angry person because they don't hire friendly people to work at the DMV. What's a clot shot? Oh, gosh. I'm not even going to get into that, Naomi. What is. Thanks, Gray Man. I'm so excited. I'm coming from terrible New York. Is someone in the comments named Gray Man? Okay. <laughs> you guys know what the Gray Man is, right? You guys know who the Gray Man is? Anyone besides the Gray Man want to talk about what the Gray Man is? Because this is a relative thing, especially since a lot of you guys like to get into the uh, politics of the world. But the Gray Man. Does anyone want to tell me what the Gray Man is? Or should I not bring it up? Should I just leave the su suspense? Ladybug says the DMV is the entrance to the netherworld. Yeah, I mean, the DMV is a place that will take even the most sanctimonious, uh, Christian, uh, good-hearted, whatever you want to call it, most morally ethical person and literally bring them to the edge of anger or beyond anger. The DMV can do that to people. <laughs> the most religious person, the most, even if they're not religious and they're just a very patient, calm person, the DMV will take you to Pluto. If you want. Emmanuel says, I just realized that Temp the Tucson and Tempe similarities because they both have universities. They both are a college town. They both have a mountain and they're both have light rails in their downtown. Yeah. Because college kids, you know, they don't they don't typically have uh, automobiles. So having a light rail around there would uh, up the the ridership. But what ended up happening was actually the people who were of uh, sleeping outside or homeless or whatever ended up riding it more than the other people. And then the, the students and the business people decided they didn't want to ride the light rail because they didn't want to be around the people because they felt unsafe. It was a, it was a safety issue. Most people they will tell you, why don't you ride the, the light rail? They'll tell you two reasons. It's slow and, or it's unsafe. Now, does that mean that all the light rail is unsafe? No, I've ridden the light rail even in the afternoon, but do you guys ride the light rail? I mean, you guys tell me. Do you ride the light rail? Uh, Christian says, someone who blends into society without attracting attention is the gray man. Yeah, so the gray man is the person who doesn't go out on social media talking about all the guns they have, doing all the prepping they're doing, and they don't try to stand out, but they're really like... Like, you guys ever seen Navy SEALs in real life? They're not like, you know, Vin Diesel. They're not like The Rock out there. They're actually like... I've seen some small, like wiry look at Navy SEALs and Navy SEALs in case you don't know are the creme de la creme you don't get approved into the Navy SEALs unless you pass BUDS and BUDS is the most arduous uh, military training the United States offers uh, so um, you know those guys they don't look like Navy SEALs what you would see in the movies but they really are Navy SEALs which means that they're they have high IQ they're very intelligent they're uh, tactical and they're also physically fit but you don't have to have big muscles to be physically fit and be able to be a Navy SEAL um, because it requires a bunch of different things. But that's basically the same concept of a gray man. Someone who doesn't stand out. They don't flex. They don't talk about anything. They blend into society, but oftentimes they can be some of the most dangerous or most lethal uh, effective people. It's kind of like the U.S. Marshals on an airplane. You don't know who the U.S. Marshals are on an airplane because they're supposed to blend in. But that's like the gray man idea. So like if you type into YouTube, how to become a gray man during societal collapse, there'll be a bunch of videos talking about <laughs> how to go, how to go gray uh, in a situation. Because what happens is you don't want to stand out. You don't want all the people to know, you know, when the looters come that you're the guy with all the stuff. You're the guy with all the guns. So they go rob you. You're the guy with all the backup equipment, all the extra ammo. The gray man doesn't let the, the, the potential looters in a societal collapse. Because a lot of people don't think about that. When society's collapsing, there's mayhem all around you, you know. When it's a SHTF kind of moment or SH, yeah, when it hits the fan, 
You guys get it? <laughs> Jake says, I'm so excited to get involved in Arizona culture. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how old you are, but uh, the big thing to get involved in Arizona culture is get into the uh, off-roading communities, get into the hunting communities, get into the sports scene with the Cardinals and the Suns, as crazy as that might sound, or uninteresting. Uh, you know, going out to the bars during, before and after the games just to check it out. That's how you're going to get to know who's these Arizona people are because most people who are diehard Arizona, especially if they were athletes at some point in time, they're going to pull for the home team. Which mountain came first in the one in Tucson or Tempe? What mountain? Oh, which a mountain? Oh, between Arizona? Yeah, because th what they're talking about is the A on the mountain. So you have Arizona State has the A on the mountain. I don't know which one came first. You probably are asking which which one uh, built their university. Which one's an older university? Which one is older? Does anyone know? Is Arizona State older than U of A, University of Arizona? I think University of Arizona is older. Simone Maxim says State 48, Jake. Yeah, John Wick would be like, John, John Wick would be like a gray man, yeah. Um, let's see here. Jeff, can you live in Hannigan's Meadow or is it just a campground? I don't think you can live in Hannigan's Meadow. Uh, I, I, there might be some homes around there, but usually it's like a campground area. Let's take a look on a map here and see if Hannigan's Meadow... So Hannigan Meadow is like around here somewhere. <coughs> Excuse me. Wow, that just came out of nowhere. Don't worry, you can't get you can't get uh, sick through the through the computer screen. <laughs> you know, people see that they're like, oh, "Did you just sneeze? Who? How dare you sneeze around me right now during a pandemic?" Hannigan, right here. There it is. I knew I was in the area. I mean, it just wasn't coming up. But anyway, so Hannigan Meadow, I don't see any homes around here. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a campground. It's like got a lodge. It's probably the closest place you could live if you wanted to be anywhere near Hannigan. By the way, this if you're going to move to Hannigan Meadow, it's kind of like um, Colorado. It's like living in Colorado. Yeah, there's. No, I guess the closest one is Alpine. <laughs> if you wanted to live in any sort of civilization, you would probably live in Alpine. But you can see they've got some interesting stuff out here. Blue Vista Outlook. You know, look at the look at the amount of just never ending ponderosas just in every direction, right? Lots of bears up there. Bear Wallow Wilderness, yeah. Hike I'd imagine hiking up here has got to be unique. I would like to take my because I when I opened this chat here, I was talking about how I got one of those uh, trail cams. And I want to take a trail cam out to like a wilderness and just see what's out there. See what gets picked up on the trail cam. You never know. I mean, I'm not expecting too much, but who knows what's out there. Um, but uh, a place like Bear Wallow Wilderness would be a cool place to put the a bunch of them, actually. I'd probably want more than one attached to a tree. Who knows? Maybe we'll find the Mong Mogollon Monster, that, abom that, that Bigfoot that supposedly lives up on the Mogollon Rim. Because we all know some of you guys have already seen the, uh, the Mogollon Monster. We, we, some of you have probably seen the Mogollon Monster. <laughs> and you've also seen Aliens. Or, well, I'm assuming. Let's see. Has anyone seen Aliens? Because this is a question that keeps coming up. But they're like, hey, can you talk about the Aliens? Can you talk about the ETs? The extraterrestrials that are out there? And can you talk about the uh, Mogollon Monster? Okay, so the Mogollon Monster, many people don't see it any day. It's, they say it existed back in like the mid to early 1900s. Uh, Ladybug says, I'm scared of Bigfoot. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't exactly want to be camping and all of a sudden a Bigfoot coming up into my camp. <laughs> you know, that's like the worst nightmare scenario is a Bigfoot. It's like, what is Bigfoot going to do when he shows up in my camp? So, but that's just fairy tales. It's folklore, right? I don't know if it's real, but some of you guys have said you've seen it. XX says, never saw any aliens. I've never seen any aliens. And I've been out and about. I haven't seen any aliens. Yeah, Bigfoot, no, no bueno. What's Dogman? I haven't heard. No, there's another one uh, out there called uh, 
So there is another one out there called uh, Chubacabra. You guys have heard of Chubacabra? They say that this this thing exists. It, and actually, it used to be a myth. That's a hard one to spell. Sorry. <laughs> this is a hard one to spell. But, so this, this thing used to be like a myth, right? And then now we see them actually quite a bit. Uh, it's like they call it a Mexican ha hairless dog. But yeah, I mean... The Chupacabra sightings have happened across Arizona also. What's my favorite golf course? Oh, my favorite golf course? I like how you guys like throw good questions at me to get me off some of the crazier fringe comments like Chupacabra. Uh, my favorite golf course? You know, there's, there's one out here that I, I don't know if you guys know about it. I used to work at this golf course when I was a kid, so maybe that's why I like it. It's called Rancho Manana. I used to uh, water the greens in the summertime to make, because they use Bermuda grass and it requires humidity. So I'd go out there and spray it. But the only problem with that is it was effluent water, recycled water. So uh, the water stunk. And I'd be out there like watering it with recycled sewage water. Uh, and I, I, I'm just a kid just trying to make five fifteen an hour. That's how much they paid me. And uh, anyway, Rancho Manana is a cool golf course. But that that's 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 one that's not expensive and it's kind of cool it's like a legacy course but uh i used to also play legend trail when i was a kid i could only go off the ones i used to play when i was a kid when i what i consider as a kid a nice one and then there's a lot of private golf courses that are great like desert mountain has geronimo i think geronimo's if you if you got a friend that lives up there you go to geronimo dove creeks uh, dove valley is a nice one uh but then as you go into like uh Mesa Tempe if you want a cheap one Papago Papago golf course is is reasonable they got Arizona Country Club I don't know about that one but where's Papago let's see here yeah I would recommend Papago uh, a dog track that my dad loves to play like he lives in North Phoenix so he's always taking all of his friends family everyone who wants to play golf with my dad they're going to Paradise Valley golf course <laughs> and this is a total dog track but all the new the newbies who like golf, they like playing uh, Paradise Valley Golf Course. It's next to Paradise Valley Community College. Cause it's flat and it's it's like a par thirty two. So, okay, guys, we know the Trump rally is going on in Arizona. It's like everyone keeps saying that. We know, we know, we know it's going. There's a lot of people who would who left this live stream to go watch uh, the Trump rally. In Florence. Um, but we get it. We get it. You guys are in the politics. But no one who watches this channel, or most people who watch the channel, don't want to watch this channel for politics. They ask me not to bring it up. <laughs> that's, why, that's, why, that's why I ignore it. I'm like, oh no, here we go. They're asking me about politics left and right here. I have to like not do it. Oh, it's Paradise Valley Skate Park. There you go. Is there gang rivalry between West and East Phoenix? No, not that I know of. I don't know of any gang rivalry between East and West Phoenix. They're too far apart to even, like, what are they going to beef over? What are they going to beef over? I mean, and we don't have, like, sports teams. Like, the, the, the biggest beef that I've seen between any sort of, like, gang activity that I personally knew about was between Phoenix and Los Angeles. There was a little bit of a beef, and, and it's always been around sports. Especially like with the Lakers and the Suns, the Diamondbacks and the Dodgers, and now the Cardinals are playing the Rams. There is a little bit of a beef with that. That's a thing. Um, yeah, that's right. No, no politics in here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Someone says the same guy talking politics. Um probably fight over hot sauce i don't know what i mean no the the sports rivalry between los angeles and phoenix is huge i mean we back in the 90s when charles barkley kevin johnson dan marley and the suns were playing the uh lakers in the playoffs you know was, we we had these signs that said beat la like everyone had a sign like right when you came into the arena they gave you a sign that said beat la and that was like a chant beat la beat la <laughs> so you know it's, it's a big thing. And then when the Dodgers fans come into town and they try to head over to Chase Field, it's, it's a thing. Uh, 
Uh, Ladybug says, I have friends that love to talk about it and it drives me nuts, the politics. Uh, waterfront locations, Lake River for homes. Oh, JT, yeah, I mean, really, I would say uh, Lake Havasu City. Well, you could get it in Lake Havasu City or the Parker Strip right here. Parker Strip up to Senega. Because I, I show you guys that in the in the video that I have playing right here, right? Oh, wait. Let's see. That. That's Parker, Parker Strip. And then, um, let's see here. Another area where you could get some lakeside living is in like uh, Sholo. So Sholo has that. There's a lake right there. Uh, so you can live near a lake. I don't know if you could live on the lake, but then in Pine Top Lakeside, they got some lakes where you can live like Rainbow Lake right here. You can see those homes around Rainbow Lake. <laughs> Pretty nice. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'm gonna jam out here and get some food and uh, we'll do another one soon. So thanks to all the new subscribers and everyone who hit the likes. We got over 177 likes on this one. And we'll see you guys on the next one.